G'day, in today's video, I was just wanting to run through a couple of things that I've purchased in the last couple of weeks and a replacement that I got from a company. So first of all, I bought a newer 50 watt hour V-Lock, go alongside my 99 watt hour ones I have. Now I've got a couple of these 99 watt hour in the newer brand, but mainly I've used the Kame TV brand, which I love. So these ones have USB-C, which is super handy, and the 50 does as well. Now the reason I got the 50 is when I'm using the gimbal, I use a, a V-Lock plate and the USB-C to power my Canon R5C. And I just wanted to have a more slimline battery option Given that I don't use the gimbal for very long on jobs, I wanted to save a little bit of the extra weight and just have that size difference just to save on that space. So it's a bit hard to see, but it's definitely thinner. I did give it away. It's about 200 grams lighter than the 99 watt hour one. And even versus the old Kame TV one, it's, it's definitely a bit smaller in size. So I bought two of the 50 watt hour batteries and then worst case if i run out of those two batteries then i just jump back over to the all the uh, 99 watt hour ones i have i got on the first test i got two hours 50 for the first use in terms of charging it to 100 percent and then how long the r5c would record for so i'm just going to keep in my mind that for safety i'll go about two and a half hours before i'll change it out um, i did learn a good lesson i was just doing a test on the table so it was recording nothing in particular but i hadn't let my R5C record all the way to a depleted battery before. So you do come up with a corrupt file at the end of that, you know, two hours and 50 minute recording, but you just have to take the card out. I put it in the computer. Then I actually took the card back out of the computer and put it back in the Canon R5C. And then it comes up with a, do you want to repair the file? Super simple. It took a little while, but uh, the file was there, but I definitely don't like the thought of recording until a battery runs dead. I'm glad that happened when I was just testing and just reminded me that yes, always do keep your batteries above the depleted mark so that uh, you're not kind of killing the file potentially, especially if you are recording for two hours and you lose that file, that would be a bit of a nightmare. Now, the other thing I was interested by with the 50 watt hour battery was how it would go on a light. So I popped it on my Godox 120 watt panel and basically you can only use this one up to 46% of that light. Uh, otherwise it comes up with an error message saying, I think it's overload protector or it's like OP. And basically that's saying that uh, you're drawing too much power for the battery to handle. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna use these as my gimbal R5C charging kind of batteries and just stick with the 99 watt hour. But yeah, if you are planning to use these on a light, I think it's meant to be under 46 watt, but I, I'm sure you could use it on a 60 watt kind of light and just stay below 70% or something like that. Now, the other thing that came this week was a little package from Austria. I had one of my CF Express B cards kind of crack. So I contacted Angelbird and they kindly uh, said they'll replace it under warranty. I just had to send back the original card that was broken. So they raised a return shipping label. Once I got it back to them, they shipped out the new one. So super easy. And I'll just show you, this is an older card. This is exactly the same problem as the first one. Uh, so they sent back a brand spanker. Angel Bird seemed like a great company. The return process was easy. I just sent them a photo of what was wrong. Really quick response. So glad that panned out really well. And they also did, very exciting, my kids are, pretty pumped to try this but a uh, apparently an Austrian delicacy a little wafer so you know if you do have a faulty product that you send back you're gonna come back with a snack so pretty exciting now one of the other things I want to talk about is it's getting very close to delivery dates for the Canon C400 which I've ordered which I'm very excited that'll replace my C70 as my a cam but what I've just wanted to touch on is I I needed two C70s on a job recently and I borrowed one. They had the small rig cage and because the small rig actually attaches up on the hot shoe, it gives you such a firmer grasp for this top plate. And I just want to show you, there is so much flex in this top handle that if you were to run focus motors off the top here, when you're, if you're picking the camera up and it flexes back, it actually lifts the focus motor off the lens because there's that much give. So I have enjoyed my tilter cage for the duration of while I've had my C70, but that flex has always been a bit of a, a cringe point for me. And it makes sense because there is no 
anchor point along the top there. Keep that in mind if you are a C70 user and you haven't bought a cage yet, I'd probably suggest doing the two-part small rig cage over this tilter cage, just given that flex in the top there. Also with the C400 coming soon, I've been checking out uh, what accessories might be available. And so far I've got uh, wooden camera, Ari and Bright Tangerine. But those ones all look to be about three to six thousand Australian dollars for the kit, which on a thirteen thousand dollar camera, I just don't really want to spend that much more to cage it. So once it arrives, I think I'm just going to borrow from my C70 kit and just use the current small rig rails and adapter on it until say small rig come out with an option or even tilter to see what they've got um, i think the tilter version is even going to be about two thousand australian dollars just based on the burano price for its kit so they're very similar size cameras so i think the pricing should be pretty similar between the burano and the c400 cages just something i was umming and ahhing whether or not to buy an order before the camera came just so it could be running straight away but i'm just going to make do with what I've got and then just see what more affordable options comes out. Keep an eye on that one and I'll, I'll let you know what I end up deciding but for the moment just going to hang out and just see what comes out. Now one of the main reasons I decided to order a C400 is wanting a full frame A camera. I've had the C70 for a bunch of years now and really love it and I think it's got a really beautiful picture and it's, it's served me for what I need and my clients really well. Um, but with how often I use this lens, I just want a full frame option that I can have kitted up ready to go. So obviously this on the R5C or the R5 is a full frame lens on a full frame camera, but I don't leave my R5C rigged up ready to go in my run and gun style with the, the monitor and the audio setup. And I generally use the R5C on the gimbal, so it's not really suitable for me to leave this on plus on the r5c i'd then be using screw on nds rather than the c70 having the built-in nd so with the c400 this will be full frame lens on a full frame camera so i'll actually get the 24 to 105 on the c70 it is handy given that it goes essentially to 35 to 120 but at the, the wider angle of 35 i just get caught a few times in that not being wide enough and kind of needing to change lenses which on my run and gun shoots is what I'm trying to avoid. I'm just trying to have one solution just to, to keep cracking. And what I'll be interested with this lens on the C400 is the telephoto option in camera to kind of crop in on the sensor because it's a 6K sensor. I'm hoping we can crop in a bit and kind of turn this into like a, a 280 mil with a crop. I find it really good on the R5C. Uh, obviously that's an 8K sensor, but I'll be really interested to compare that and just see where we end up. Really excited that we're within the, the month that they're due to be shipping the C400. I think it's gonna be really good just ergonomically for the way I shoot uh, with my easy rig and with run and gun shooting when I just predominantly wanna keep this on and not change through my prime lenses. I will be very interested to see how the Deity Theos kit goes on the C400 as well, whether or not I have the same issues that I have with the C70. So that'll be fascinating. That'll be one of the first things I check. I'll let you know about that one as well. Also, I'm uh, being lit today by my new Godox LDX 100R. Uh, which is a 120 watt panel. I got this one, it's only about five or, I think it's about 600 Australian dollars, but I got this when I do my run and gun shoots for broadcast where less gear is better in terms of, we just have one beach trolley, chuck a light in, chuck a V-lock and just run. All right, so I'll just show you with it off. So this is at 100%, I think it's set to 5,600 Kelvin. Now I'll just turn it off. So in an indoor setting like this with some trees that are in direct sunlight, but obviously it's it's not as full sun as uh, you would have. It does pretty well. I'm just bouncing it off the ceiling. It'll be really handy indoor light given it's so bright. It's got a nice soft panel on the front, but I think you'd still want to chuck another layer of diffusion in front of it. They might come out with soft boxes or something for it, but for the price and the weight and the size, I just wanted something really lightweight and easy just to carry around on on my really small run and gun shoots where i just can't afford to take any of my bigger lights time wise and space wise and it obviously has a full color so you can use it 
you know, with the full spectrum, it doesn't really work well trying to fill direct sunlight, but indoors, it's a cracker. All right, that's all from me. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you soon. Cheers.